<laughs> uh, last night and yesterday, I was away from my phone and my computer. I was taking a break. But it's okay. I got taking early. an electronic break. <laughs> I was taking a, a complete break except for uh, <laughs> enjoyment. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord for enjoyment. Can y'all see me now? I do. Okay. I'm trying to get this thing because uh, Rob is on the road. So uh, I'm stumbling through it. So forgive me. I, That's all right. Are oh, you recording as Robert Green, though? You we are recording. Huh? I say we are recording yeah. just to make sure I got all of everything. So. Okay. Are you BBWC today? Yes. Okay. My computer tells me what's going on. <laughs> I tried to be on my computer, but they didn't want to cooperate, so I'm on my phone. Okay. Well, it is the appointed hour, guys, it looks like. We all made it through the change of time, so. <laughs> oh, that we could change the hearts of men the way we change the time. Amen. <laughs> Amen. That's a must. That was deep, right Clarence. There. <laughs> yeah. You want to get started, Clarence? Yes, ma'am. You like me to do it? Yes, ma'am. All right. Good morning to everybody. This is Burning Bush Worship Center. This is our Sunday school hour. And as always, we give honor and praise and thanks to Almighty God for the technology that He has blessed us to have during this trying time in all the world that we can still come together to study his word, to give him glory, and to give him thanks for everything. This morning, we have Deacon Clarence Perry as our teacher for the month of November, and we thank God for him and his lovely wife, Sarah. Let us pray. Eternal and all wise God, we come before you, Lord, saying thank you. Thank you for our early morning rise, Lord. Thank you for the morsel of food that we've had this morning. Lord, we thank you for being God and being God all by yourself. We thank you, Lord, for the goodness and the grace and the mercy and the love and the support that you share with each of us, Lord. We give you honor, Lord. We ask that you be with Clarence as he teaches us, Lord, and be with those of us that will participate in the lesson. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 Well, again, good morning, everyone. Hope uh, others will join <laughs> us, but we move on in the name of Jesus. Um, last week, Pastor... Um, even, I had chosen what we were going to do for the month of November, and then Pastor preached last week, and he was talking about the worth, what our worth is. Uh, he was saying that we're worth the death of, of Jesus dying for us. In the eyes of God, we're worth Jesus dying for us. And I said, wow, that's powerful. Okay, And, and it reflected back on life's greatest investments, which is the title of our, our first lesson today. And when you think about investments, you think about value, something that you put in in hopes of getting something greater back. And so as we look at uh, our lesson today, uh, you know, the question that the first question that is asked is what is the most worthwhile investment a person can make? What are your thoughts on that? What is the most worthwhile investment that you can make? The acceptance of Christ in your life. Okay. Amen. And friendship. Okay. Okay. Future for our children. Pardon me? Future for our children. Amen. 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 All, all those things are, are, are correct. Um. This, this, the whole theme for this month, hopefully, will be, will play out that, that all might see the light and that all men, mankind, it is God's desire that all are saved. Uh, but we know that uh, 
uh, with Satan around and knowing the heart of men, that that's probably not going to happen. But our goal, our goal as Christians is that all are saved, and that's what we're seeking to do. Um, uh, this, this writer, Dr. Stanley, I'm still using his, his stuff. Amen. It, it isn't a retirement account. The most important investment that a, a person can make is not a retirement account. It's not a lucrative career, buying a house, car. While all these things are good, there's no better way to invest time, energy, and resources than to help someone come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Amen. And, 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 and that kind of relates back to, um, you know, when Pastor was talking about we're worth, you know, we're worth the dying, Christ dying for us, you know? Just think, think about that, how valuable you must be in God's eyes to be worth him giving his son, you know? He thinks mm. very highly of us for him to give his son on our behalf. Just think about that and, and, and ask yourself, am I worthy? We are worthy because part of us is from God. Mm -hmm. So in order for him to say we are worth it, you know, it's because he's got a part in us and he's hoping that we learn to be more like Jesus. And then Amen. the more we learn, you know, the better we can be toward the whole world. Amen. 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 The, 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 thing, the thing for me is the fact that he loved us yes. enough to send his son into the world to die for us. Mm -hmm. That's, mm -hmm. the, that's the, the highest reason that he sent his son into the world was because he loved us enough. Amen. And we're supposed to be developing a character where we look like him. Amen. But Amen. how many of us can say we possess the love of Christ enough that we would be willing to die for someone else? Wow. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's deep. Yeah, that's heavy, you know. Um, given the opportunity in my mind as it stands today, uh, I would lay down my life for my loved ones. Amen. And I would lay down my life for my loved ones. Uh, and the question is, well, well, why wouldn't you lay down your life for any, any human being? Hmm? Well, uh, when you think about it, you want them to go to heaven. Mm -hmm. And you know, if you go, you know, they're going to follow behind you because they're going to understand why you did what you did for them. Mm, maybe, maybe they will. A lot of them you know, probably, probably, probably won't. I, I, I'm just saying everybody has not, uh, the reason that we evangelize is there, there are people lost out there. Yes. Okay. So our way of, of, you know, when I say I will lay down my life for them, I mean, I, I'm talking my loved ones, you know, my wife, my kids. Your, your bloodline. Literally, I would sacrifice my life for them, okay? Now, and I'm, I'm asking myself now, if you say that about your family, should that be for all mankind? You know, for, for anybody who, who, who who's living, uh, is it, proper to expect or would we expect that we would say the same thing for someone who's not one of our loved ones and that, that's not even part of the lesson that just popped into my head why why wouldn't you lay down your life for any living person you know and you know, i think Clarence, about and I'll, I'll do this joanne I'm, I'm not gonna i've probably got this this trend going right here i'm thinking now about the mass shooting that happened last week over in norfolk and how the people who rushed to help that lady didn't think about their own lives. They just rushed in to help. Yeah. You know? And so I'm thinking, wow, given a chance to think about it, I'm saying, yeah, I would lay down my life for my family, but I'm not so sure about other folks. Well, you don't know until the moment comes, I think. Yeah, that's true. You know, you don't know, you know, if, 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 if you see that, hey, somebody needs some help, 
Do you sit around and worry about, well, am I going to get hurt too? Or do you just go ahead, you know, think about the people who rushed into the World Trade Center uh, when it was on fire and burning and, 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 you know, and lost their lives, you know. So I don't think you really know until the moment comes. I would like to think that I would do what is pleasing in the sight of God in any situation. And I guess we don't really know, really, really know until the moment time comes. All we can do is live our lives the way God has directed us to. And, um, you know, but the, the greater love has no man than he that would lay down his life for his brother. So, you know, I think that we really don't know until the time comes. You know, we Amen. Think, we think we sin, but we really don't know until the time comes. Amen. Think, oh, it it, it runs with today's lesson. We are a valuable resource. Joanne, go ahead and get your thought in before I continue. Too late, next line. You forgot. <laughs> Come on, Joe. Uh, I, I was just gonna gonna repeat what I said a while ago. It's it's none of us can say that we've developed the love of Christ for others. So mm -hmm. that's why when we say we would do things for our family, because we love them so much that we would we would go that extra mile of the way for them, when you don't know others or don't really have that close relationship with them, you'd have to think about it. Mm -hmm. and, I'm not, and I'm not talking about uh, thinking about if you see somebody's house burning as to whether you would run in or if you saw somebody being shot, if you would try to help them. But just think about laying down your life for them in any given reason as to whether you would do it for someone that you don't have that close loving relationship with. Mm -hmm. Clarence, if I yeah. could jump you in. Sure. Uh, I think we go back to, to the ahead. lesson that you're talking about, the topic is, is how we value people. Mm -hmm. We value our family without question because like Joanne said, we know them and we have a, 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 a fervent love for them. But a stranger or uh, situations, um, you know, it depends on how we value life, whether mm -hmm. we would jump in or not. Mm -hmm. And I think people who jumped in the World Trade Center, and the people who have that lady, put a high value on life itself, not the people, but mm -hmm. just life. Mm -hmm. And we'll cause them to jump in. Now, we, we say we would like to think that we be one of those people to jump in. But like you said, we don't know till it happened. Yeah. This is like the young, young lady at Columbine who, when mm -hmm. challenged with, with the point of death, do you still believe in Jesus? She had a high value on her, on her faith. On Amen. Her right. That's right. That's right. Thanks, Tim. Thanks for that. Yeah, I, 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 agree, yeah. With that. I agree with that wholeheartedly. Um, we are developing, I would like to think, Tim, that we are developing that character that would uh, make us value uh, things as Christ does. Yes. And mankind, that we that would value mankind the way that, that Christ did. You know, when God gave his son, he gave it for all mankind. And that's a powerful act to follow. Okay. But that's the cards that we've been dealt to be Christ like, to be like him. And so, that involves uh, us being concerned about mankind, not only just our family, but mankind in general. And uh, we're a work in progress, I guess I would have to, to say it like that. Uh, when we first uh, gave our life to Christ, when we first made that confession of faith and said that we wanted to be Christ-like, we wanted to be a Christian, we wanted to live that life, uh, we took on an awful important responsibility a lot of people go into that unknowing unaware of the level of responsibility that it carries with us in the eyes of God and what we owe to God uh, but God did that he, he he that method of evangelizing he put it in place to grow his kingdom and think about it one person at a time how many people can you evangelize at once 
Now, you can be involved with multiple people, but at this moment in time, you can only evangelize one person. Now, when you're thinking about a sermon where people are being spoken to, uh, that that's important. And certainly it, 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 it does reach a lot of people. But us, <laughs> we're not in the pulpit. Individuals, we have the opportunity, and he only wants, he's only concerned about us evangelizing one at a time. You know, if you reach that one, that one, you don't know what that other, that one can do over time. And so our job is to evangelize <laughs> one at a time. Uh, that, that is the essence of our job. Now, I, I actually, if we're in a position like Tim, where he gets to speak to the multitudes or, you know, the church uh, as a whole, and that carries some other opportunities there, but our ability to reach one at a time is where we can make the biggest impact for the Lord. And that is to uh, fulfill Matthew, uh, Matthew 28. Excuse me, uh, sound like somebody munching. You might want to mute your mic while you're munching. <laughs> My mic doesn't show up. <laughs> And I'm taking cough drop so I don't cough all the time. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, let, let's just go back to Matthew 28. This is when the Lord was on his way to be with the Father, you know, and he was um, laying out what he wanted his, his, his disciples to do. And so we're going to go there back to Matthew beginning with um, verse 18 through 20. And it says, and Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. That's the Great Commission. That's the job that he assigned us to as Christians. The same message that he gave to his disciples, that is the charge that we have as well. And so when we look at how we spend our resources, how we uh, spend our time that God has given us in spreading the gospel, uh, it becomes evident that since we have a limited time on this earth, we need to be about doing the job that he's given us on a regular basis, on a daily basis. Any opportunity you get to, 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 to reach out and um, to tell someone about, some about the goodness of God, we need to take advantage of that opportunity. And interacting with people every day, every day, we have opportunities. What do we do with Mr. those opportunities? Oh. Well, if you think about it, when oh. go ahead, go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say, if you think about it, once we evangelize to people, then if we touch them, then they speak to somebody else, so it travels. That's right, absolutely. But if you don't start the ball rolling, what happens? <laughs> the opportunity to get to that individual may have been lost for some time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we need to not pass up the opportunities, guys. Um, mm -hmm. And that doesn't mean that you got to get out, lay down and, you know, lay out a sermon and, uh, you know, all of that for an individual. Mm -hmm. But we do it through showing love, okay, concern. Uh, someone expresses the fact that there's something that they're dealing with, you know, then you charge with what can I do to help this person get through this tragedy or this situation or to handle whatever it is going on. And so a lot of times we don't do it because of fear, anxiety, or, or do I want to say that? Or will this person think of me in this way or that way? Or will I be seen as a Bible banger? Or will I, you know, whatever that anxiety is, is keeping you from uh, doing what it is God has asked you to do is what you need to deal with, okay? But your job has not changed. You are to go forth there into the world, you know, seeking the lost. And so as we do that, we are investing the resources of our resources into growing the kingdom one person at a time. Look at those people we run into every day as opportunities to spread the gospel. 
Sometimes it will be evident. Sometimes people will even bring up the subject, you know, uh, and that and that gives you a, a wide open door. But more often than not, they're not going to do that. And so instead of saying, you know, you need to you need to find the Lord. Well, that's true, but is that the way you want to approach it? Is that the way you, that the way you want to say it? Is that going to be the most effective way? Uh, so I would say no. So in a, in a real day to day everyday environment, we all go here and to and fro every day. What is your method of reaching out to that person? Or this person is showing a concern. Uh, this person is saying uh, it could be uh, I mean, I've got this health issue. I got this relationship issue in my family, I've got this issue with my boss, I got there are all kind of opportunities for us to begin to build that bond that's going to allow us to reach out to that person and at some point hopefully share the gospel or maybe just plant the seed. What, what are your thoughts on that? What you, you know when you go day to day and you all be, you all been challenged with that. You all, I know you've had it. Whether you took advantage of it, I can't say. I know I, I haven't always done it, but but I try to do it more and more. And and in reaching out, um, and I'll just use this one as an example. We have a steady flow of young people coming through our store over at Field and Stream, uh, where I where I work. I mean, we got we got hire, new hires today. Seems like every day there's somebody new. And so when it comes to young people, I will just reach out to them and say, hey, how you doing? You know, where are you from? You know, well, Chesapeake or Long Island, wherever they came from. And I said, well, are you still in school? You know, I started showing, asking interest about them being in school and what they're doing with their lives. I said, I don't know what your plans are, but if this is, this is your plan for your final stop as a vocation, and you know you probably need to rethink it. You know what? What, what are your plans for your life? You know, and that kind of opens up the doors. And sometimes you know people say, well, you know, I, I ain't got money to go to school, or my folks are you know divorced, and I'm you know kind of in limbo. You know, there's all kinds of situations going on out there that we are called upon to address in love and in concern for our fellow man. What's your what's your strategy? Don't make it long, but you know. What do, you, do you have a do you have a strategy? Let me uh can I jump in there? Yes. Uh the first thing that I do, parents, is ask God, what do you want me to say to this person? Because mm -hmm. uh, we can come up with all kinds of strategies. Kim, you lost you. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can, you kind of went away for a second. Go ahead. All right. I don't I don't know what's going on with my phone. Um we really don't know what's in their heart. And I have learned that not let my heart block what God want me to say to them. Um, and for as an example, I remember this man who I knew was a racist and praying. Uh, God wanted me to speak to him and tell him about Christ. My own heart, me from saying anything to him, the man passed away and I came before the Lord and asked for forgiveness for not doing what he said because I didn't want to be the cause of him being in damnation. So after that, whenever that kind of thing came in before me, in my, in my heart, I said, God, what do you want me to say to this person? And not let my visual reception be a block, mm -hmm. whether they're young, old, or, or whatever. Right. And, and since then, God is, is like, <laughs> you know, people will stop me even when I don't know them and ask me to pray. And we got a, a we got an audio issue with your with your with what you're breaking up. Okay, I don't I don't I don't know how to handle that. I'm, okay. uh, and by the way, Joanne, I'm I'm Robert today. Uh, Clarence is BBWC evidently on my screen. Okay. Can, can you hear me? Yes, but you're fading in and out. Uh, okay, I I'm I'm not uh savvy enough to know how to handle that. I don't know. My, okay, well, I'm, go ahead and talk while we can hear you. Okay. I let God tell me what to say in all in all instances, because I don't know what they need to hear. Mm -hmm. um, I do. You're going again. Do the small talk. I'm you really want me to say. And stuff that doesn't sound like scripture. 
me paraphrase or something like that, but I have to go with what he, that's what he gives me. I, I am saying it. I think the value there, Tim, is, is, is establishing a relationship or a bond with the person before you really start addressing what the issues are in their lives. Just one that, a bond of friendship. Right, you know, right. Like to, I, I agree with that. Yeah. And I don't, you know, I don't try to get into their, into their issues unless they draw me into that or ask me, uh -huh. hey, you know, I'm having this problem. Um, exactly. One man called to me, came to me yesterday. Um, he's been in the store and I helped save his job about seven or eight months ago, you know, because he wasn't coming to work like he supposed that they were getting ready to fire him. But I saw a value in him, so I interceded for him. Well, he came in yesterday and he said, Mr. Perry, I, I I need you to listen to this. And he played a recording of his, his brother's wife, I think it was, uh, responding to a black person where they live and the person recorded it, recorded the conversation and must've put it on social media. Anyway, he was saying, you know, you know, he, he, and it was essentially what he was asking me, what should I say to her? You know, and he says, I, he said, I'm very uncomfortable with what she said, you know, what, what should I do? You know, what, what should I say? And um, I said, that's a tough one. I said, she's family. Uh, and obviously she has some, you know, some, she was angry, you know, and I said, we got to give, you know, look at that. She, she, she knows she, you know, she was angry. I say, but it's, it's still probably a little deeper than that. And so, you know, just pray on it. That's all I can say right now. Just pray on it and see what God wants you to do, you know. And that's all that I, that I could give him at that point. But if we, if I did not had that previous relationship with him, he probably would not have come to me. Right. You know? Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So we have to we have to prepare the prepare the garden, so to speak. And, and plant those seeds that opens the door for a later uh, occurrence yep. that occur. We don't know when you have to make people the door going to open. <clears throat> Go ahead, Deborah. Oh, I was coughing, but I did have something to say too. I just wanted to say you have to make people feel comfortable coming to you mm -hmm. because uh, the way I approach things sometimes is that um, I set the example. And people might feel comfortable coming to me and they can ask me things. Like, say for instance, when I work, I walked in, I'm always saying good morning. Mm -hmm. I mean, even if a person looks down, I'm like, good morning. And they're used to be saying good morning. They're used to be being bubbly, although some of the other people around us are not bubbly. Right. So when they're looking down and they're like, well, I can go to Miss Deborah because I know she's going to have a good answer or she's going to be in a good mood. And she's not one that changes her mood from day to day. So I always try to set the example to let people see how I am mm -hmm. and then go from there. And they feel comfortable maybe talking to me. And I've had that a lot. Right, right. Yeah. You got to be approachable. You know, mm -hmm. that, that, that's the big thing there is being approachable. And if you're used to being, a, a, you know, in a, in a foul mood all the time, people come to expect that they're not going to be expecting anything from you from an <laughs> encouragement, encouragement standpoint. They're not going to seek you out. Yeah. They're not. Uh, that's right. That's right. Young man came back in the store yesterday. He left the business uh, sometime early last year. And he moved. He came in and he came to find me and I said, Mr. Perry, I'm, I'm, I mean, I just came by to stop and see you guys. He says, uh, I moved to, to Washington, D.C. And I said, oh, okay, great, great. So how things are going? And he was telling me about his job and he's got a good job and how, you know, happy he is up there and he lives out in Manassas and just bring me up to speed. But that was because I had expressed an interest in what he was doing when he was in school. You know, so they... Planting those seeds, guys, is so important. It, it, it won't always come, you won't always see it come up right then. Yeah. But you never know how God is going to use that. And so we got to show yeah. love. We got to show concern. Um, 
a lot of these young people, I didn't even know who that they knew who my, these are the new people now. I didn't know they knew knew my name. I didn't know theirs. And and hey, Mr. Perry, how you doing? You know, and, and whatever like that. And I'm saying, well, okay. Some of it's my memory. I can't remember names a lot real well, but I'll ask, I said, okay, have we already met? And uh, sometimes it's, oh, well, you know, you kind of met you at the door one day and stuff like that, you know, but um, we got to make ourselves approachable. We got to make ourselves uh, friend friendly. Friendship is important. My fraternity has a motto, friendship is essential to the soul. And so that means that we got to make ourselves open to people, okay? Nobody's going to come to you. Nobody's going to come to a, a match. They got a, a fire going, you know, they want, they want some water, something to cool it down, you know? And so we got to put ourselves in a position of being that person. Um, and I'm not saying that, like I said to him a few minutes ago, not necessarily jump on the on the issue at hand, but just be friendly, be a listening ear. And that will give you opportunities a lot of times to share, you know, and, it, and the least um, aggressive thing you can say to a person is, is, hey, I'll pray for you, you know? And if they wanna, uh, if they understand what that means, and most people do, or, you know, it might be say, you know, if you know that they have a relationship with God is, hey, pray for them, pray for that situation. You know, if you haven't already, pray and continuously pray and God's going to fix it, you know. So we have opportunities, and, but we have to make ourselves approachable and we must have a, a strategy to get to the point of trust, kind of like Deborah was talking about, okay? I'm doing a lot of talking. Go ahead. Go oh. ahead. I, I just want to say something about something that happened to me from years ago. Uh, when I was working at DMV, I had this guy come in, and I used to work with years ago at McDonald's. I was his manager. And he came in, and I was working with one of the employees. And he said, hey, Ms. Debra, how you doing? I said, okay. I said, how you been doing? And he said, I've been fine. I work for the hotel, and I've been working there ever since I left McDonald's. And the reason is because you always told me be on time for work. And I kept that as a top thing, and I've always kept a job. And I was like, I didn't know I had even said that to him, but I guess I did, and he took it to heart. And it's just, I guess, setting an example, and it was just amazing. Yeah. You never know. You never know. But you he know what I'm doing being nice to go on time for a long time. Huh? I say he probably watched her come to work on time for yeah. a long time. Had to. Yeah. Had to. <laughs> Had to. But when he said he kept a job since then, I was like, oh, that's great. The young black guy, and I was so proud of him. That's great. That's yeah. Great. Well, I just I just want to say this. When my sons were younger and we stayed um in Norview, that's where they made their best friends. And Asi's friend has always been a Muslim, not practicing, but because his dad was one, he don't want any part of Jesus. I don't know why. Mm. But anyway, um, every time he came to the house, I would always talk to him about the Lord. And then, um, he never did accept him. But then uh, this year, he was talking to Ashley and he said, out of all the people I've met that are Christian, your mom is the only one that really showed me the way the Christians live. But he still haven't accepted it. He said, because everybody else, they always talk down to me and they don't show me what I need to know. And then he said, but your mom is the only one. She's never argued with me. She just always offered Jesus to me. And I thought that was really nice because this was many years ago. This was when they was like 10, 15, stuff like that. Wow. Oh, what a blessing. Amen. 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 I, I think I, I had a similar experience. I had a, one of my good friends was Muslim for years, and I never condemned him 
I would I would witness to him in in ways that he could accept when he asked me a question. Mm -hmm. I didn't I, I didn't shy away from it, but I I just lived my life uh, as best I could as, as being a Christian. Mm -hmm. And I think not being as Clarence put it one earlier, not being confrontational, but but living in a, a point where you're inviting. Our job is not to browbeat people into the men into to the life, but to invite them. So if, if you are condemning them, you're not inviting. You know, you don't have to agree with their lifestyle, but you have to just show them love. Mm -hmm. And over time, my friend became a Christian. Amen. 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 So Amen. We, we have to, it says, we, we have to win people. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and winning doesn't mean we win the fight. We win Amen. it, we win by witnessing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And by how you live your life. Live your life. That's Amen. being observed. That, that, is, yes. that is the witness. Mm -hmm. Amen. A lifestyle. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, getting back to the point that I had a few minutes ago, and, and, and I'm loving this conversation, guys. Uh, when we first trusted in the Savior, God transferred us from the realm of darkness into the kingdom of his son. Okay? Okay. Uh, it's, and that's in Colossians 1 and 3. As a result, we became an instrument in his hand. Now, if you're an instrument, you're a tool, essentially, that God is using to fulfill his purpose. Now, if the God needs a hammer, okay, and you're the hammer, you better get ready to do some pounding, you know. Or if he needs a wrench, you got to get ready to do some twisting. We have to be open to what God is asking us to do. Uh, and sometimes now that, that's not comfortable. That's not that doesn't come to us as something we naturally do, and so it's not comfortable. So therein lies our desire to be obedient, our desire to do what God is guiding us to do. Um, as a result, he says we became instruments in His hands useful for reaching others for Christ. Guys, why are you here on this earth? Why are you, why are you here? To be used by God. Mm -hmm. I was be saying, a servant for Christ. All right. What else? I'm looking for that one phrase. Each one reach one. There you go. That's 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 closer. We're here. God uses us to reach others. Amen. God uses us to help others, to reach others, to help save others. You know, um, when you go into the hedges and the byways, you know, seeking the lost, you're going to run into a whole lot of different stuff. A lot of different stuff. I'm, I'm preaching to the choir when I say that. But I say that to say we can't be surprised by what we run into when we go out there because God's going to present you with not so normal a situation sometimes. And so we have to be prepared to engage and to do what God would have us to do uh, at that time. And the, the easiest thing to do, and I'm not talking about solving the, the hunger or solving the issues of the world, that is loving to show love, to show concern. That is the easiest thing that we can do that is pleasing to God and it's going to uh, look, be looked upon favorably in his eyes and it's going to reach the person that you are, um, that you're talking to. You can take the hardest criminal in the world. You show him kindness and love, it's going to make a difference. You know, somebody who you consider to be one who hates everybody, people just respond differently to kindness. It, don't all, it isn't always obvious that they, they're responding, but it, it has to have an effect, you know? And so we have to be constantly in a mode of reaching out, loving, showing concern, uh, not giving up opportunities God gives us to touch somebody. Okay, to invest our time, our energy, our resources, whatever that you go on to do, into somebody else. Amen. You know, in each one, reach one. That that's what it's all about. Okay. And 
And also, I, I just want to say this also. <clears throat> when Orin first came to our church, I think um, Cynthia was her friend because Cynthia told her to come to our church. And then when she had to go to the doctor to get a colonoscopy, and you know you have to be there real early, mm -hmm. she had asked all of her friends and everybody wasn't available. And then the Lord told her, well, the Lord told me to go to her home. And I went to her home and um, she was asking me, why was I there? I said, the Lord sent me over here. And then she asked me if I could take her to the doctor. And I, I, I was able to do that. Mm -hmm. And even now, she still talks about what God did for her when she didn't have anybody else to do it. Mm -hmm. God sent me there because I was available. Amen. Amen. You're never you know, available, but obedient. Good job. Amen. You, 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 you never been obedient. Think what would have happened? That's yeah, right. yeah. If, if we're going to be instruments for God, you know, we have to make ourselves available. Amen. You know, a tool that sits in a box and don't do nothing is just a tool. It's not. It's not doing the purpose for which it was created. Uh, when others turn from sin and receive the Lord's salvation, their eternally destiny is altered. So when when you have spoken to somebody and they seek the Lord. Their destiny is, is, is changed forever. And we don't know how God is going to use that person going forward to fulfill his purpose. That's not our concern. Our concern is to share the gospel, you know, in the best way that we can, the most effective way we can. And the least amount that we can do is to show love and concern. And you don't have to say a thing about God to, say, to, to do that or Jesus Christ to do that of course we eventually get around to it but initially you know it's just showing concern for the person you know um all of god's okay here we are here we go where did i go oh yeah uh it says eternal destiny is altered not only that but satan has received a devastating blow all his plans for those individuals were thwarted and as each new believer begins to live in God's will, there's no telling how far the Lord will extend his kingdom through them, you know? And, and there is no better feeling to me than to see someone that uh, you had some investment in turn their life around and do well. That, that just, give, it just gives you chill bumps, you know? It just gives you a feeling like no other when you've had an effect in somebody's life and they come back and say, hey, because of what you did, you know? Mm -hmm. And I say, well, what God allows me to do, you know? Amen. You know, we should yeah. never take the glory because the glory belongs to the Father. And yes. so, but we can acknowledge him in, in that adoration. When somebody comes to us with adoration, we direct that adoration to God saying, hey, just, just an instrument, just a tool doing its job, you know? Um, we we don't take we don't take glory in that. Okay, glory is not ours. <clears throat> um, whether you tell someone about the Savior, you're carrying out the Great Commission. Uh, this gigantic task is accomplished one person at a time. Think about it. How many people you think a sermon? You know, I guess the person, I've heard, I've heard stories of people who walked into church and sat down and heard a sermon and converted their lives. I don't think that's the majority of folks uh, that, that come that way. They're coming by someone that they know that has shared with them or shown them uh, 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 the way that God works through their actions that probably has more effect than anything, you know, because you can hear the word, but it doesn't really mean anything until you see it in action, you know, and the action comes from those who are believers. That's us. You know, we have to show love. We have to show concern. We have to show compassion. We have to be uh, open to what God is asking us to do. 
And it's not always going to be in a pretty environment. It's always not going to be a, 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 a quiet, loving person. Sometimes it's going to be somebody who's kind of ugly, who acts ugly, who uh, you wouldn't think could ever be saved by anything or anyone. Like us. We don't turn down the assignment. We don't have the option of turning down an assignment. When God tells you to do something, you can reject it and say, no, I'm not going to do it. But he's going to get somebody to do it. Okay? Amen. You want to be rewarded. Reward, you want to be rewarded for your obedience to him. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, you know, sometimes you'll say, I've, I've heard myself saying, oh, now, is that God speaking to me or what? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, you know, you get those times and you're saying, okay, Lord, is that you? Are you speaking to me in that, you know? And so you just have to ask for clarity. You have to ask, okay, you know, uh, I'm not sure. So, you know, Lord, you know, speak to me or, or something. And he always has a way of giving direction. And it isn't always obvious that he's giving direction, but he, he's pretty good at his job, I tell you. Amen. Excellent. Hey, Clarence, um, we gave the example of somebody coming in church. Often we're looking at the harvest. We don't see the planting. Mm -hmm. We don't see how God tills the soil in that person. Right. We see the harvest. But mm -hmm. God is always at work in the person that he's bringing to himself. Uh, we don't get to see all that. Sometimes we, we see a part of that. <laughs> or, we, or we may be part of the planting. We may even be part of the tilling, turning the soil That's in right. some way. But off see somebody come to Christ in church, that's the harvest. Yeah. And and as a law, it's it's just like planting anything else. It's a process. Yeah. We don't get to see all of it. We like the end part. <laughs> hey, when people come walk into the, when troubled people walk into the church, they've heard something that tells them the church is the place to be. That's right. Somewhere in the past they've heard something that says, okay, you need to seek the church. You know, right. someone's told them that, or they may have been when they were a child, you know, grandma telling them, yeah, maybe you need to, you know, you just need to find the Lord. And, you know, the Lord is in church. That's what most people think. So you're right. You're right. You know, there, there are times in our life where we do run into people that are obstinate or that have ugly ways. Yeah. But I'm learning that rather than, than, being standoffish or judgmental of that person, you should get to know them because we don't know their pain. We don't know where they're coming from. We don't know what they've been through. We don't know their hurt, their disappointment. And those are the things that we need to, to try and find out before we turn our backs and walk away from them. Be a friend. Be a friend. Amen. Be Sometimes it's real, real, real odd being a friend to someone that nobody else likes. But that's a being. That's a, that's one of God's people, you know. And that's what we call on to be. That's what we call on to do. Um, we can't be stand back and be judgmental and say that person's too ugly for me to deal with. I don't want to be seen with that person. That type of thing. And and probably one of the biggest lessons guys that I've learned is when it comes to uh, homosexuality. When I was a child. Uh, that was something that a young man didn't do was uh, have a relationship or a friendship or be cordial to someone that was known to be that way. And so I lived that motto, you know, I mean, uh, they used to be, I used to work at the Golden Triangle in downtown Norfolk Hotel. I did that the summer I graduated from high school. And uh, there was one there who always, smiled at me and had something to say and I'm sure that I look like the devil incarnate uh when I look back at him because I was being so ugly and I didn't want to have anything to do with him you know and it took me years to understand that hey even that person is one of God's own okay and so uh my my today it doesn't bother me to be in their in their company uh, I'm not in that world but you know they are, and they are still someone that can be saved. And so that's yeah. where you have to look at all situations. Um, someone that you know, like this young man, to kill those three people—that's somebody's son, that's somebody's relative, that somebody loves that person the way I love my people. He got up on the wrong road. He will obviously pay 
dearly uh, with his uh, freedom, not having his freedom uh, once he's tried and everything, but God can still work with that person and can still yeah. turn that person around. Yeah. You know, it's hard. He took three lives, you know, and, and but he's still, mm. he's still savable. You know, if he walked in here right now, you know, what would you say? If you walked into your, your presence right now, what would you say to that person? You know, you have to show compassion. You're talking about somebody that snapped? Huh? You, I mean, we're talking about him. He, I mean, you just think about talking about somebody that snapped. That boy snapped. He did. He did. And and what, a, a Jen, Joanne, somebody said, I think it was Tim earlier ago, what went on in his life to put him in that situation? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What yeah. happened that took that young man, uh, Kennedy used to work with him at the rec center. Uh, my, 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 my granddaughter, Kennedy, she used to work with him at the rec center. And um, she said she knew him. He was a nice young man, he used to dress nice. She just knew him because he used to always dress real nice, you know, and you know, you wouldn't have thought that he would have ended up in this type of a, a situation. So something in too. that kid's life changed. 19 years old to, to get to that point. Yeah. And we cannot stand back and be judgmental and say he's not savable. He, God, still loves, God still loves him. Uh, Clarence, let me share this. Um, I haven't been in jail ministry. A lot of people think people in jail try to use... Um, uh, Christian experiences to get out of stuff, but in my experience, there many be real conversion of people who had no hope of ever getting out of jail. Mm -hmm. Their only freedom they ever experienced was when they came to Christ and became free. There it is. You know that that's that's uh, <coughs> a a good thing when people go to jail. And the first thing they'll do is pick up a Bible. And, and like Pastor Tim said, you question whether they're being sincere or not, but whether they're whether you think they're sincere or not, it's a good thing that they picked up a Bible and that they're reading it and that they're digesting God's word. The jail is, I'll say this briefly, the jail is a fertile place for a lot of things. Um, I know that Muslims have a lot of converts coming out of the penal system. Yes, they do. Yeah, you know. So I know that is you know there is a place that people are vulnerable. They're open to something that's going to help them be better in their lives, and that's what they're being offered. And so we need to be at, at work, even in in the jail ministries. You know. Um, that's something that we, you know, we as a church that we need to really, really get better at. Uh, I know that we are talking about now with uh, Exodus 3, uh, those who are being released back into the society, you know, working with them. And that's great. But there's a lot of souls that are in there that are going to be in there for a while that we need to be, you know, trying to reach. You know, Clarence, being the mother of a son that has been incarcerated, my heart has always yearned to, to be a part of a ministry that went into the facility because like you said, the Muslims are there That's and right. they're taking over the, the jail systems and prison systems with their messages. And, and it, we're not, it's not only their messages, but they, they are a source of protection. And that is what, what draws the most. Mm -hmm. Amen. Nobody's nobody <laughs> gonna mess with a person who's coming to their group, and that's how they get a lot of converts. And I know that from experience from my, my both my sons and my stepson. Amen. Mm -hmm. yeah, they are protective. But they and, spread um, their, they spread their message in there too, oh, and that's yeah. why they, they get so many converts in there. That's right. That's right. So there's a there's a, there's a sample for us, you know, example for us to to follow. Um, as we get toward the lesson, I'm going to kind of start to tail it out now. Uh, God's plan for enlarging his kingdom is so simple. One person telling another person about Jesus. 
That is the essence, the basis of God's plan. One person, you, telling another person about Jesus, sharing the gospel. Just think about how being in heaven and seeing someone you introduced to, to Jesus. You go to heaven and you see that person there and say, wow, I never thought he would have been here. You know, <laughs> it's uh, probably a pretty awesome feeling. Your joy will far exceed any discomfort you may have felt in sharing the gospel. You're worth it. More than that, every human being is worth Christ dying for. And so God has put an investment in you. All right. And the only way that we can, he can show um, a return on that investment is that we go out and evangelize somebody else. That's how, you know, and that person is going to evangelize somebody else. That, that tree, as it expands, will be tremendous over time. But it starts with us. So how big is your tree? Don't be concerned about the numbers. Just be concerned about the next person that you have an opportunity to serve and to, to love and to show kindness to, and in your way, share the gospel. Amen. 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 I hope today's lesson has been beneficial, uh, that we will take it to heart. And between now and next Sunday, you know, don't try to create anything. You don't, you don't have to create it. As you go out, you are going to run into somebody who needs to hear the word. And so just be prepared next Sunday to say, hey, you know, it happened a couple of times this past week. Just a couple of quick words on, you know, what it was. We can share that at the beginning of next week's lesson. The next week's hey, lesson. Brother Claire, can I say something? I knew, I was wondering when you were going to cut that speaker on go ahead oh well well i wanted to say this you know you know the 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 thing that resonates most here is that that the our lord jesus christ said this he came to seek and save those who were lost right he's saying those who need a physician he say uh, a phys you you he here's what jesus came down through 40 and two bloodlines and Jesus had whores in his bloodline, Rahab the harlot, and then he had Mary Magdalene. But here's what he did. He embraced them, not for what they did and what their lifestyle was like. He embraced them to show them what life could be like for them. Mm -hmm. and, and when it boils down to it, if you think you perfect, that's your biggest mistake in life. And, and I'm talking about us as individuals, because to be Christ-like means we have to abandon our personal lifestyle mm -hmm. and adapt to him. And he, he took 12 men, and this salvation and joy that we enjoy today, he taught it to 12 men, and it spread to us. And this is... It's uh, what I, I would like to say eons and centuries later, we enjoy in this fellowship with our God because we know he's real. We know that we were not born perfect, but we were wonderfully and perfectly made. And we sidetrack. See, we were not born sinning, but we were born into sin. And Christ showed us that there is a way that it's impossible for us to lose if we accept that good news that he came bringing. Because, see, when he showed up, he came bringing the good news. He said, I didn't come to change the law, but I brought you something better and more perfect. And we have to understand that we are recipients of that perfect love in Christ that he wanted for us to establish. See, without the children of old, it could be no us. And without us, it could be no them. And since God already had a perfect plan, let me tell you something. Even today, it manifests itself in our daily lives. God, all those who pretend to do this and pretend to do that, God is raising up an army out of the streets of sinners. He's taking whores. 
He's taken prostitutes. He's taken sinners, killers, murderers, thieves. And he's saying, your life can be converted and I'm going to use you. Look at Matthew, the tax collector. Look at Judas, is a carrier. He was the purse carrier for our Lord himself during the transition and the teaching. So God can use anybody. And God ain't looking for nothing perfect. He's looking for what he can make perfect and made perfect that was outside of his will. And so we have to understand that if we point a finger at something or somebody, we need to correlate it and understand, Lord, you made this manifest for me to recognize so that I could do my part and be submissive to your will. Because God is holy. And all of our righteousness is still unclean. He declares us righteous. And we have to understand that as saints and his children. And if you don't know this, you have to know it and he'll teach it to you. Be just like Jesus. Have a burden for souls. That's where the real sacrifice came in. He laid down his life one time for all times for all men. And so that means every sin we've ever committed, every one we will commit, is covered by his blood. And it shows that he's using the similitude of God the Father. You covered. And I got you. If you would just submit to my will and understand that I am God. See, God sent so many witnesses, and we killed all of them. And he said, I know what I do. I'm going to send my son. And we killed him, too. And when we did that, before we killed him, Jesus made it real plain according to the Father. He said, let me tell y'all something. He said, I am Jesus. I'm the man you're looking for. He said, but I want you to keep this in mind. He said, ain't none of y'all taking my life. He said, I'm laying it down, and I'm going to pick it up again. Jesus is Lord. And the Holy Spirit lets us know no man calls Jesus Lord except by the Holy Ghost. I don't even want to. I don't even want to dress it up when I say the the Holy Spirit, because see, God is a spirit. And when we use the Holy Ghost, God dealt with people of old in the name of the Holy Ghost, but He simplified it for us simple people. He said the Holy Spirit. So once you believe in the Son. You believe in the Father, and you get a you get you get a down payment the moment you believe in Jesus Christ. He gives you the Holy Spirit to indwell and live with you forever, even after this earthly life. See, that's a down payment on what we got coming in eternity. And so we have to accept that and put self aside and understand that God is who he is, and always will be, and always was, and he will not change. What do he say? I change not. I'm the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And then if you can't grasp a hold of it, he said this. He say, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word is God. So Jesus is the spoken word of God. And he manifests himself in the flesh when he came and dwelt among us. But it was so that we wouldn't be lost. What father wouldn't love his child and do everything he could for him? So what we have to do as saints and children of God, or for those of us who ain't sure that straddle in the fence, he said this. He said, hey, no man can serve two masters. You will either love the one and hate the other. So grasp a hold of it. And when we deliver that message, I love what Pastor Dr. McNair always say. He say, remember this. He say, I have not always been a pastor. Mm -hmm. So it's not about shame. It's about the glory of God. And if we do anything to try to lessen that and make ourselves uh, 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 glorified or glow, we still in error, and we need to stay in our prayer closet just a little bit longer. 
so that we can be totally used of God. Because, see, the, God, God don't, he don't need no help. All he wants is a witness. And we're his witnesses. We're Amen. his witnesses. That's what or we God. are. Brother and, and so Brother Abbott, yes, I, I hate to interrupt yes, here, but we, we're on a time squeeze here now. Uh, appreciate the contribution, though. That was that was your, your everything you said was right. We just got a kind of short on time today, okay? Oh, uh, I'm, I'm gonna shut up. I just get so excited <laughs> when I talk about the Lord. I tell you. <laughs> Uh, Let me share next, next week's I lesson. Just, I tried to keep I tried to keep quiet, but the spirit was just bubbling up in me. I say, Lord, can I share this? We're gonna have to get you to come in ten minutes earlier. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. The Lord says the same. Next week, the power of your conscience uh, is the title of our lesson. The power of your conscience. First Timothy, the first chapter, 18th to the 20th verses. Uh, on the website this week, uh, Bonnie, Bessie was kind of slow getting it posted on the website. But uh, for those of you that have access, Belinda did send it out on the bulletin board. So uh, now that you, you got it for next week, so we don't have to worry about you having to look for it. First Timothy 1. 18 to 20, the power of your conscience. Jeanette. Got gotcha. you. Ready. Let the words of my mouth. Let the words of my mouth. And the meditation of my heart. And the meditation, and meditation of my heart. Be acceptable in thy sight. Be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength. Oh Lord, Lord my strength. My strength. And, my and my redeemer. And my redeemer. Amen. 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 Have a blessed day, guys. You too. God bless. Church.